okay look at this place like wow zuh. so this says punta chame something i can't see the sign but maybe this is it maybe this is machete i can't see the sign on it though <sighs> No, I think that's like Punta Chame Villas, maybe. Looks very nice. This little road, like how fun is this? Like this is what travel is about to me. Like exploring and getting off the main road and off the beaten path and definitely not in some stupid put me in a bubble resort. Ugh, I'd rather die. Um, like just getting out and exploring things and seeing new things. And the great thing about it is that we always feel oh, 100. Yeah. Oh, there's a kite surfy thing. We always feel so safe in Panama that we don't mind like turning off roads and, and exploring. Okay, so this says we're not allowed to enter only members in the restaurant, but I think this must be, maybe this is machete. Okay, go in there, Brian. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know anything. Um, welcome. This has to be a yeah, yes, machete. machete. Okay, cool. This is gonna be fun, guys. Okay, the Pepineros are happy to be out of the truck. And here we are at Machete kite surfing, Punta Chame. It's windy, which I guess is the conditions that you want for kite surfing. I know nothing about kite surfing. This is not something that I would ever do personally because I am scared of everything. Um, so let's see, it says we've got check in, you have a day pass, kite lessons and information. Sounds like a plan. Check it out. Oh my gosh, this is so super cool. All right, I think we're gonna learn some fun stuff. So stick around. And while you're sticking around, make sure you click subscribe and click notify so when we post a new video you will know all about it and do not forget to join the iGo Panama Facebook group because that's how we found out about this place Oh wow, like I never would have imagined this. So windy, I don't know how the audio will be with this new camera, but wow. Now you can see why they kite surf here because the wind is like constant. I've never seen anything like this in my life. This is so cool. Self is excited, a big fluffy Rottweiler looking dog <laughs> has come up to be her friend. And now we'll never get her home again. All she ever wants to do is play. Silva! You got a friend? That's a friend? Ike is like, yeah, whatever. All right, so we got to the end of the road in Punta Chame, and we have found a new friend, Itzik. Did I pronounce that correctly? Correct. Thank you. All right, so Itzik owns Machete uh, Kite Surfing School here. Uh, in Punta Chame and so we're gonna do a little interview with him and learn all about kite surfing because I know Cerro about kite surfing so I'm ready to get educated all right Itzik okay so tell us how you got started in kite surfing because it seems a little odd of a sport for Panama yeah. odd? not for me not for you <laughs> for me it's normal it's my normal everyday life <laughs> so we started doing a kite with a buggy on land. It's a three-wheel buggy. Oh, uh -huh. And that's before kiteboarding even existed, many years before. And um, so from there, we decided to try in the water. There were a couple of people in, in isolated places of the world trying. And how long ago was this? This is around 25 years ago. Wow. Yeah, we started even before the bar existed. Okay. It was two, ha two line handles. Uh, it was actually four lines, but 
it was handles. It wasn't like a proper bar. Right. And uh, and that's when we started experimenting. And uh, there were a couple of myths that people were actually going up winning a kite. So we were kind of like kind of like human guinea pigs. <laughs> That's a good way to be, though, because then you can kind of develop your own style and yeah, yeah. Especially when you survive. Yeah, yeah, surviving <laughs> is always good. So then, so then you started that about 25 years ago, and so was it just mainly a hobby for you at that point? Correct. Okay. Correct. Yes, it started as a hobby, but it grew. The the, the teaching grew like organically. Mm -hmm. You know, it happened. It flew. It 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 was flowing. So people know? would see you doing it and say, "Hey, can you show me how to do that?" It took a couple of years, yeah. you know. Yeah. First, the first thing people said is this nuts. What, is, what does he think he's doing? <laughs> you know. But when we started succeeding, then people started digesting. It takes. It always takes some years, you know, for the first people to realize right. the potential of the sport. Right. You have the pioneers like yourself, correct. and then you have the people who come oh, after. Right, <laughs> exactly. And this happens over and over again in throughout history. Uh, for example, now we're in the wing. I, I've been on the wing for five years, from the beginning of the wing. Wow. And, and uh, you know, the, the first years people used to say, that, that looks dumb, <laughs> you know? And now more and more people are getting into the wing and the wing is really the future of the wing sport. Of the sport. So it evolves just like any sport. It evolves. It evolves. And we evolve with it. Exactly, which is really awesome. So now are you originally from Punta Chame? From Panama City. Oh, from Panama City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did you find Punta Chame and realize that this is a really good place for kite surfing? Because we knew that it was a windsurfing town. Mm -hmm. Windsurfing needs wind. Wind, yeah. <laughs> so that's why, that's why we came here with the buggies. With okay. the three wheel buggies. Right. There's lots of space with a low tide, mm -hmm. as you can see right yeah, now. Yeah, the beach is huge. And, uh -huh. yeah. and it's perfect. To, for the buggy. Absolutely. So, you know, one thing after the other, it just happened. Mm -hmm. And so then when did you move to Punta Chame and make this your full-time life? Mm, maybe 20 years ago. Oh, okay, so it didn't take you all that long no, to no, really no, get no, into no, it. No, 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 no. I knew, I knew that was uh, the north. That's awesome. So now there's a there's a season for windsurfing, right? Now, it, do you call it kite surfing or do you call it windsurfing or does it matter? Okay, there is there is windsurfing. Okay, it's like a black and white TV. Nobody does. It <laughs> okay, anymore. then I will quit saying kite surfing. <laughs> so there is kite surfing. Okay. You can also call it kite boarding. Okay. The same thing. Okay. And there is wing with G. Wing like a, with a G. Like a okay. Wing, like like a bird, bird wing, a, right? Like a huh. And that is the new the new. So that's sport. where it's going. So what's the difference between kite and so, so wing? So the, the wing you have. The, a kite it's pretty mm -hmm. much the same it's different but the same and you got it in your hands you don't have a bar and it's not oh, far away from you okay and you're also on a foil oh wait i understand it's the one that's kind of like the kite is like almost attached to the board right kind no, of that's a wind that's a oh that's my a black and white i have so much to learn <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so so yeah so the the, the wing with g uh-huh it goes in your hands okay and it's not attached to anything. Okay. And the board is a foil board. It goes in the air. Okay. It's so all of the boards that I saw out there, they're all foil boards? No, all of the boards you saw are regular twin tips. Okay, okay. Foil boards is the one that goes in the air. In the air. If you see okay. it, you'll know. It's okay. hovering. It's oh, hovering. really cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so we were before we got into that, we were talking about the season. So I guess there's a time of year when the wind yes, starts blowing that's, here. That's key. That's very important, mm -hmm. especially because it's now. <laughs> okay. Now is the time to start because it's the beginning of the season. Okay, so we're in December right now. Correct. So it starts in December. December to April. To April. Yeah. Okay, and so that correlates with the dry season, basically. Correct. Okay. Which we call our summer. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, is there anything else we should... Well, what else do you offer here? Because I see, like, a, a yeah. little cafe you restaurant back Bren here. Brenda there in the restaurant. Hello. She'll take care of your drinks and your food. Okay, and do you have accommodation here? Correct. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So how many people can you house here? Uh, around 10 to 15 people. Okay, mm -hmm. so you're kind of full service then. So the one stop, experience. you come here, you can stay here, you can eat here, you can... Kite. Wing surf here. Or wing. Yes. <laughs> and then you can eat 
and uh-huh. sleep and kite again. And do it again. Yeah. again. Oh, that's awesome. So where do you find most of your tourists are coming from? Are they mainly European all or all over? All over. Just everywhere. Yeah. Usually uh, during the week, mm-hmm. it's full of people of all over. Okay. And then in the week weekends, it's full of locals. Okay. Oh, okay. That makes mm-hmm. sense. Mm-hmm. So is Punta Chame really like the singular area in Panama for yes. the sport okay yes. I so. mean you can you can practice a sport in other places mm-hmm. like Cologne or Bocas maybe Bocas mm-hmm. in wind is not the best it's not the best yeah uh-huh. but um, you can practice it uh, in other places mm-hmm. but Punta Chame for two reasons is the best one okay. because it's the most consistent okay wind uh, we do have a, a local phenomenon thermal that makes wind pretty much every day all the time okay and secondly because we have infrastructure here. You know, you come here, you have the school, we've been on it for 25 years. You know that, you know, there's experience involved in this. And and so, yeah, it's right. a kiteboarding spot. So if someone is already into the kiteboarding and just want to come here, I assume you rent all the equipment and all of that. So yes. they can get everything they need here. They don't have to haul all their equipment from Correct. wherever. And okay. They have some of it, but they don't have it. We take care of it. All of it. Uh-huh. Okay, that's amazing. All right, so I'm I'm a poyo. I'm too scared to get into, <laughs> into, into this. But I think we're going to try it with Brian. So if someone comes here and they've never done this, what kind of an experience might they expect here? So um, the first two hours, you're not going to hit the water. Okay. You're going to be on land, uh, learning how to move around with the kite, um, learning how to control what not to do, right. which is really important. Yes. And uh, so the second session of two hours, then you start getting in the water, body dragging without the board, just to get start to get the feel of of uh, the kite with the you know water mm-hmm. kite is two new things. Right. And then the third two hour session then you start uh, trying the board so you usually you, do this you, over three days you can do two sessions two two hour sessions a day 1 okay. a.m. 1 1 p.m. okay yeah that's very intense it depends on I the was person. gonna say like how physically fit do you think someone needs to be to be able to try this zero really yeah just uh, the only requirement is to know how to swim uh, yeah that's important if okay. you know how to swim then you can kite and okay. you can wing all right, well, let's see. Brian, do you know how to swim? Okay, he perfect. Like he <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, then um, I think we're going to give Brian a little introductory lesson. We don't Sounds have like tons of time, but a little introductory lesson and a little introduction to what you're doing here at Machete. Awesome. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so, Brian, this is our guide. It's an inflatable guide. Obviously, because it, it, it's got an inflatable skeleton. Right. Okay. So that saves it from having any rigid parts to mm-hmm. hit you in the head or anything mm-hmm. like that. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So step one is they have to inflate the kite so it doesn't have any like hard parts on it. It's all like air that that keeps the framework of it together. I guess so it's not so heavy and it doesn't conk you in the head. Okay, that goes really fast, like even by hand. Okay, that literally took no time to get that thing inflated and get a helmet on Brian's head. And now we're just a quick little walk down to the beach, except Selva has to be on a leash because she is making friends with everyone. Selva is convinced that she needs to learn how to kite surf. Oh. Okay. So they had a little chalkboard session in the sand where he was like kind of showing how things work. And now they're talking about how that correlates to the actual kite. Okay, so Brian is now, so here's his kite. And then he's unwinding all of his string now. All right, Brian's kite is in the air. 
right there. And he's learning how to maneuver it and steer it. Well, Brian's little lesson is over because we don't have time to be here for long enough for him to learn enough to get into the water. We'll have to come back another time. Uh, but he did really good. And so now we're just sitting out here in the little beach area, relaxing and having a drink. So I'm having an orange juice. Brian, what are you drinking at like a, not even 11.30 in the morning? It's noon somewhere. <laughs> Is it good? Uh, yeah, really. Good. Okay. It's got fruit in it, so it's healthy. <laughs> healthy vodka. Yeah. <laughs> well, how was your lesson? It was really good. Um, you know, it's uh, it's an art form. You know, it's it definitely takes a little time to invest into it. You know, and it's it's fun. Though. It's really interesting. You use your mind, you use your body, and you're out in the sun. Yeah, and it's not even hot on the beach because the wind is blowing constantly. I could see how it would easily become an obsession. Yeah. But you got to have the time to invest in it. Yeah. Right. But, you know, if you're out here for a long week, it's really a good thing to do, you know, keep you busy for a couple of uh, hours each day. Heck and yeah. I think by the end of the week, you would probably be able to pick it up somewhat pretty well. Yeah. Awesome.